Hey everyone, we made it home from the Back to the Land Festival. Um, we love to visit places and travel, but we're always glad to roll back home. Um, we've got to unload our truck. We actually had to stop and get feed and a bunch of stuff. Um, and then we have stuff that we got at the festival and luggage and all of that stuff. But um, uh, I'm getting ready to start uploading videos and some of them are kind of long and um but it's stuff that i really want to preserve even for my use in in the future for for mine and randy to go back and look um especially the um the hog processing videos so um i'm gonna break them up into chunks and um hopefully that'll make more sense and it won't be as long you know, watching it. And if you want to check them out, you know, you'll know um, which one you want to go back to, to, to refer back to. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend this festival. Um, we had a great time, met a lot of great people, um, like-minded people that we were able to, um, you know, interact with and learn from and kind of fellowship with. So that was really cool. And I can't wait till the next one. So um, stay tuned for the videos. I'm probably going to be uploading, I don't know, maybe once a day or something like that until I get everything on there that I want on there. But um, I hope you enjoy. See ya. So we're on our way to the Back to the Land Festival. I'm not sure. What town is it in? In our hotel is in Linden, but I don't, I'm not sure. It's the Nakomi um, Retreat Center or something like that. Um, we stopped and ate breakfast and we should be down there in, I don't know, a couple hours. Good to see everybody. You think this was an AA meeting? Everybody's back there saying hi, Billy. <laughs> hey, glad to see everybody out here today. Um, okay, um, the hope is is that we can all kind of do what we're going to do the old way. That's what we've been trying to all get back to. I suspect everybody in this room, to some extent or another, is kind of not happy with the status quo. Am I wrong? Can I get a show of hands on that? Yeah. Okay, now part of that is maybe taking some of these old ways, okay? And trying to find our way back to it. Now, that's part of what we're going to do here today. Now, I can take a bandsaw and William and I can honestly cut up an entire half of this pig and let's say, if we had a bandsaw, maybe 20 minutes, wrap it up, put it in the freezer. But that's not what we're going to do today, you know? We're going to do this the old fashioned way, the way they used to do 100 years ago. Now, the only difference is, is the time of year. We're October, this ordinarily would have been done in November and December, okay? The way it used to go in the area I live in is that they would have had these pigs roam, roam up in the hills. They would gather them up at a certain time, all the families, like a bunch of us right here, right? So you would have maybe your pigs marked some kind of way, maybe it was a notch in the ear, it could have been any number of ways. You would bring them in and then all of us as a community would process all these animals. Now, if I'm doing this completely by myself, which I can do, we're talking hours and hours and hours. But when I have the collective help of everybody in this room, now I lament to use the word collective, 
for a variety of reasons, but I think you get the point. If I can use our joint wisdom, knowledge, and all of what we have up here, what we have in here, and what we can do with these, we can all get it done. So the way it would have traditionally been done is that with somebody like me, who's a butcher by trade or a meat processor, depending on whether or not you like that word, we would basically cut this animal into primers. And then let's say the young lady over here, she, I would give her a piece. I would tell you how to cut it up. This gentleman right here, I'd give him another piece, tell him how to cut it up. Another person over here. And then at the same time, as we get the stuff prepared, all the hands that came to help out, you would eat it at the moment. That's exactly what we're going to do today, all right? Everybody cool with that? All right, now homesteaders typically are pretty introverted groups. <laughs> so we're going to try to get everybody out of your box today. Everybody is completely accessible. Nobody, there's no rock stars here. Is that it's going to take some time. Everybody's going to feel like a pig on roller skates, forgive the pun, because a lot of you have never done this before. But that's okay, that's what we're gonna do. We got rubber gloves up here. If you feel comfortable doing it, fine. If you don't, that's fine too, okay? So, by a show of hands, how many people do wanna actually put your hands on this? God. Okay, I suspected. Okay. So what we're gonna do, by and large, William and I are gonna go through this first one. Darren, he's right over there, along with his wonderful little wife, Patty. Darren, Darren's been a friend of mine for a lot of years, along with Patty. We started a homestead together up in Kansas. And uh, we invented a way, believe it or not, of processing chickens that has made chicken processing a lot easier depending on the application. But that's maybe next year. That's one way of doing it. There's a standard way where you leave it whole, but we do it another way. So William's going to help out. Darren's going to help out. We're going to work on this first half. And then on the second half, that's when we're going to get some hands on it. We'll probably do it on the first half, too. So it's going to be something of a... Um, it's going to be as interactive as it can possibly be. Now, because of the group this size, typically with the butchering class, it's not beneficial to have more than three to four people per instructor. So we're going to do the best we can, okay? But I'm going to show you a way today, that no matter the animal, I don't care if it's a pig, a sheep, a deer, it's a paint by number system. We're going to talk about the pig we have here, okay? It's an American guinea hog. It's not my favorite, but it's also my favorite at the same time. Number one, we never raised these types before. The problem is, is that it's entirely too big. It's got a three inch fat ring on it. Now, is that a problem or is that a good thing? Well, it depends. If you're also in preparedness like most of us, how many people are in preparedness in this room? Yeah, because nine times out of 10, that leads to a homestead, right? <laughs> so the two can overlap. So that fat ring on there, most butchers would tell you that's a very bad thing to have. I'm gonna tell you it is not. Because we're gonna find, and I'm gonna show you why today. Because you get, typically from carbs and protein, you get four calories per gram. Fat, you get nine calories per gram. Plus, if you do this stuff right, you treat it right, it's shelf stable. So we have as much fat on this pig as we have meat. But we're gonna take a lot of that fat away, we're gonna get down to it. Now, the love of hate of a guinea hog, is that you almost don't need to feed them. That's a pretty good problem to have, right? They also don't root as much. So if anybody's seen how we raised them on our YouTube channel, we've done, there's a variety of pigs out there. We got, a, we got so many of them, but the cool thing about this pig, the reason I am able, William is able, and Darren are able to bring this here and do it for free, is that our pigs are raised 100% on non-GMO free that we didn't food that we didn't pay for, okay? We repurpose it from certain restaurants. We live near Asheville, North Carolina, so it's pretty easy for us. Anybody gets with us, I'll tell you how you can do it and maybe some of the local places around you. We don't, after the initial cost, we don't spend a dime on our pigs. So basically, if we did the math on it, typically it's about, if I'm honest, maybe 23 cents a pound is what we pay for, for pig that you can't buy in the store. So that's pretty doggone cheap. We don't use feed, we don't use any of that stuff. So hit us up, we're gonna, Cross-pollinate, I hope to learn so much from all of you out there. All of us have different, various backgrounds and wonderful things like that. So please, as much as we can, get rid of whatever. This is why we're all here, to fellowship and learn. So let's, let's do all that. Okay, so what we did, I'll get to the pig and then we'll get to the instruction. What we did, we, on the side of the mountain, shot this pig, basically where the eyes and the ears meet. That's where you want to place your bullet. Everybody says you need a shotgun, we use a 22. You don't need a shotgun. 
Especially if you intend to get some of the cheap bacon off that animal, you ain't getting it if you use a shotgun, especially with slug in there. So there ain't gonna, the only thing left to do with the head is, you know, compost it. There's not much. So 22 goes in the brain, okay? It didn't kill him, but it shocked him. So he's laid over on the side. This is not comfortable. We take a long knife, we cut it right behind the ear, we cut the carotid, bleed it out. We pump the legs, make sure all the blood's out, the animal's dispatched. Then we go through the skinning process, then we go through the gutting process. You're gonna lose about a third of your weight right there. Then, because this thing fell down the side of a mountain, <laughs> yeah, we really didn't consider that part of it. We do live in very steep terrain. It fell down the side of a mountain, and so we had to basically do it all out in the field as opposed to doing it on a gamble. So next year, with any luck, y'all, we can do this. I hope next year Darren and I can demonstrate the chicken processing that we invented. Also do it the traditional way. Also, maybe with any kind of luck, do it on the hoof because everybody's going to learn a whole lot better that way, right? Yeah. So with that said, we're going to mosey on over here. We cut it all. Let me also say the head's removed. Trotters are removed, the trotters to you and eat, that's basically the pig feet. Those are removed, so all you have is the hock up, tail's been removed, head's gone, and we cut them down what's called the sagittal plane, which is basically straight down the middle, okay? Cut the breastplate, cut the backbone straight down the middle. We did a little blurb yesterday on the YouTube channel, but we have a, um, a more detailed pig processing video, and hopefully in the near future we plan to do more of it. So with that said, whoever's comfortable, we're gonna do it up here. And as soon as we get to the point where we can go ahead and start cooking, do we have a volunteer? Are you still okay with doing the cooking out there? Yeah. Okay, anybody that can help them out, maybe do the mise en place. With in French, that means mise en place. Or preparations. Or his sous chef, anybody wanna help out with that? This is a very interactive thing, y'all. Anything you have questions with, just shoot them out. We'll get it squared away, all right? So with that said, we're going to go up here, we're going to talk to the primals, and then we're going to get down to brass and nail. Okay, so this is the front, this is the back. <laughs> That's important. Okay, now what we have in here, right off the bat, if you have any pastries, confectionery, any of that kind of stuff, right here is your leaf lard, okay? And it's you can always tell because if you look at the fat, anybody want to get up close, you can see it. It's almost buttery. You can break it up in your hands, right? This will make the best pastries you've ever had okay so we're going to first cut that out and you can actually if i let this set up real good you can pull it out with your bare hands just like so okay hope nobody was wanting this tablecloth back <laughs> so right here you have a skirt all this stuff is much bigger okay now the two hardest things in this world to find folks is an honest butcher and an honest mechanic. And you got two of them standing right up here right now. <laughs> he can fix anything, y'all. Uh-oh, we lose something? Okay, so all I'm gonna do, when you do this, you're doing more pulling. You're doing very little on the front end of your knife, okay? So I'm pulling. I can actually, with the leaf lard, I can actually just kind of pull most of it right out of there. And this is gonna get its own pan. Now this will be rendered down and you will make some Unbelievable lard out of that. That's the good stuff. That is the excellent stuff. Okay, first thing out, right? So, has anybody ever butchered a pig before? Nope. Okay. Did a pig before. Okay, now up in here, this is your, everybody heard of a tenderloin? You ever go to a restaurant and they say, mm -hmm. okay, I'll get a pork tenderloin sandwich? It didn't come from, this is your tenderloin. It's that big. It ain't very big at all, right? Mm -hmm. So, what they're really giving you is something else. It's not a tenderloin. <laughs> So you see this big piece of thick fat back up here? That's not ideal in most cases, but in a preparedness sense, it is, because we're gonna render all this out. Now this is gonna be used primarily for your pastries, but this back fat, folks, I'm telling you what, if you got anything you're gonna put in a crock pot or mm -hmm. you know, on the stove, beans, anything you don't mind having a pork flavor in, that's where it's gonna come from. Okay, so this technique I'm gonna show you, I'm giving you a paint by numbers, it will work for a deer, a pig, and a sheep. Cow, almost for Dexter. You raise Dexters, right? You raise Dexters. This would work on a Dexter, but not anything else. What about a, a goat? A goat, work on a goat too. Okay. So there you go. So we're gonna take, this is really this simple. You got all these ribs in here, right? We're gonna run our finger along. One, two, three, four, five. You could go up to seven if you want to, depending on whether or not you want a long capicola. 
That's not important. I'm going to just do it the basic paint by numbers way I'm going to show you, and you can't go wrong. So we're going to count the first rib. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? Anybody wanting to put your hands on this, you're ultimately going to need to go ahead and put on some gloves. So <laughs> we're going to make our initial cut here. And unlike other butchers out there, we're going to use this bone saw as little as possible. Anybody know why? Bone fragments. There you go. Absolutely. Every time you have bone fragments, there's an opportunity to introduce things you don't want. Okay, if you want to come around here, I'm going to spin it if I can. I'm probably going to do a number on this tablecloth. I'm going to spin it around. Okay, see where I went with that? I'm going to take that cut between the fifth and the sixth rib. Like I said, this is complete. There's no wrong way to do this. So I'm going to run it up there as far as I can. Well, you can turn it all on the sauce and stuff. What's that, buddy? Yeah, you can turn it all on the sauce. Speak up, son, so everybody can hear you. All the sausage. <laughs> there you go. You could turn it all in the sausage if you wanted to, and that's completely okay. Now, in other cases, we would take these hocks off. These are your hocks, the trotter, or, you know, the pig feet would have been down here. We took that off. Okay, now that I've gotten up to the chine, this is where I'm going to break out the boning knife. And folks, you can get some cheap Victorinox knives for next to nothing, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, and I'll, as soon as I get through, I want you to listen to the sound it makes. I'm going to get through the bone, and when I get through the bone, you're going to see a very distinct difference in the sound, okay? Well, let me do it the right way. Hear that? Yeah. As soon as you get through the bone, stop. Because that's a good way to mess up your, um, it's a good way to mangle up your meat. Because there's also a certain, you, you spent good time raising this animal. You want to make sure it's treated respectfully and right, right? Okay, now down on this end, we got a little bit of stuff that's in here. We can trim some of this off. William, can you grab me another pan? Okay. There's a reason I'm going to leave it right here. Thanks, buddy. All this fat, this is, we don't waste anything, y'all. Now, even if it goes to the dogs to some extent. Okay, there's a lot more that's gonna happen here. Okay, we're gonna come back here. There's a part in the hip right here. It's called the chine. When you break a backbone in half, it's called the chine. There's a spinal cord up in there. Some of it's still in there, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make another cut right here. See where this hip is? It makes this little, like I said, this is not for every, this is not the perfect way to do it depending i'm showing you a paint by numbers way that will work on just about any animal and that's what we want right now right so we're going to cut this i'm going to go ahead let me go ahead and make a little incision here son I take my 10 inch knife and all i'm going to do this is all bacon y'all so we don't want to mess that up right yeah. <laughs> okay so we're going to go ahead a whole lot of fat on there and eh, let me take a little bit more okay i'm going to take my boning saw Remember, listen to that sound. If you didn't hear it last time, listen to it now. That's not, you don't want to be cutting meat, right? Just as soon as you get through with your bone saw, this is why I'm not a big fan of teaching this stuff with a band saw, because they're going to cut through the whole thing with a band saw. Okay? Now, I didn't get quite all the way through it, and that's fine. Go back through, get all the way through it. Bam. Now I'm going to chase it with my knife. Bam. Okay. We're going to put this off to the side. Now, no matter the animal, it still works. Now, somebody who was talking about deer a little while ago, can't remember. This animal is, is set up in cold as I'd like. It makes it easier to work with the colder it is. You want to gut and skin when it's warm. You want to process when it's cold. So this is why this ordinarily would have, two reasons it would have been done in December and November is because this reason right here, your hams, you can hang them in a structure just like this in a ham side with nothing more than that kosher salt you see over there. And if it were a different time of year, I'd show you how to do that. We can hang that literally at room temperature, be perfectly fine, but it's got to be done at the right time of year. Okay, here's your loin. Now this one is very, very, very fatty. Now, I want you to look at this. From this portion up, that's where all your pork chops are coming from, okay? From this portion down, anybody know what that is? Spread ribs. Ribs and bacon on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. But here's where you want to, first time out, like I said, this thing isn't as cold as I, as perfectly cold as I'd like it to be, but so I'm going to have a little bit of help to hold me up. Now, see, this is kind of important. I'm going to spin this around so everybody can see it. This is your pork chop right here, yo. And because this is a smaller pig, it's not going to be anywhere near as big. That's part of the benefit of a guinea hog. You don't have to feed him. 
but at the same time, there's other compromises you're gonna to have to give up. Now, I'm gonna show it to you on this side. See this pocket of meat here? That's your pork chop. See this pocket of meat here? That's your pork chop. Now, this is on this end, it is not only a pork chop, it's also, if you had a cow, it would also be your T-bones mm -hmm. because yeah. this is where your tenderloin is, right in here. So that's where, your ten that's where it would come from. So we could make all kinds of cool stuff out of this. But here's what I want you to see. From this pocket of meat to this pocket of meat, I'm gonna draw an imaginary line over here, okay? Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna do it with my knife. So I'm gonna run it through. Probably not the best thing in the world to do with your knife. And then we're gonna go back to the bone saw. Okay? Now, this one's gonna be a little trickier because it is very, it's a very fatty cut. If I, could, if I had a band saw with me, it would go, it would look actually quite perfect. And the ribs are always difficult to cut to well, the hand saw. Especially when it's cold, I mean, when it's not cold, okay? But these pigs, this is where it helps if you have some help. If I'm off my line, thanks, Darren. I'll tell you what, let's just go ahead and cut it all the way through there. That way I can run that saw down, son. It's okay to hold a knife like this as a butcher. This is called a butcher's cut. This is the way a chef holds it. A butcher, nine times out of 10, especially on a cow, they're gonna hold your knife like this. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So we'll go ahead, turn this back this way. There we go. So we're gonna separate this sucker. It's okay, I'm off my line a little bit. Never got through the ribs. Now what are we gonna do? Back to the knife, right? Okay. A lot of fat back there. Folks, we're gonna eat all this. <laughs> we're gonna start with this. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do a Humpty Dumpty real quick, okay? So we can just talk about anatomy. We're gonna put them back together. See that? <laughs> if you're a good chef, if you're a good butcher, you should be able to take this animal from the primals, put it right back together. Okay, now we're gonna talk about what everything is. This is kind of important. Everybody heard of a Boston butt? You've yeah. seen them in the store. Yep. I don't know why they call them that. The Boston butt and the pork shoulder are the same exact thing. And it's the top side. It's basically this part. So you break your primals are your shoulder, your picnic ham, and you're going to see all that. I'll separate these two. This, these are two different cuts here. <coughs> but you don't get know it because i got to separate them. <coughs> your Boston butt, your picnic ham, your loin, your belly, your ham. Mm -hmm. Okay, now part of this ham I left because... This is a paint by numbers thing. I left the sirloin. Maybe you get it, you know, sirloin's a bit tougher than a T-bone. Well, there's a reason why, because <laughs> it's back here.